Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Welcome to r slash am I the butthole, where I have searched the sub for some of the juiciest stories that I could find. And I want to say I've got some pretty good ones for today's video, so let's not waste another second and get straight into this first one by user slash hunting for my pee pee. Alright, let me preface this by saying I, male 19, am transgender, and pack using a prosthetic pee-pee. A few nights ago, there was a huge party at one of my friend's houses, and I very naturally decided to attend. At some point, I stopped remembering the events, and I'm assuming that's when I was too drunk. I wake up and find myself crashed on the couch, and I'm not the only one. And I head to the bathroom, where I discover I have misplaced my pee-pee. Explains why I felt a bit light down there. I do my business and head to the kitchen. The host is my friend and he's already awake and I'm like, hey, did you see my pee-pee? He asks me what the F I'm on about. And so I briefly explain. He loses his hit on me and tells me it's disrespectful and creepy that I bought my pee-pee without telling him. And that if his parents find it before us, they're due next week, we could all get into serious trouble. We search for the pee-pee and we find it, and now I'm once again back with a pee-pee. But my friend is still mad at me and said he won't invite me to his parties. So, am I the butthole for bringing my pee-pee to his party and not telling him? And honestly, when I first read this story, I almost died laughing at it and the comments below. My verdict is ESH, everyone sucks here. Simply because OP, a prosthetic PP, has the same rules applied to it as a real PP, which is, it stays in your pants. And it doesn't go for a walk around your friend's houses. But at the same time, your friend doesn't need to know what's happening inside your pants, so hence my verdict, ESH. And here's our next post by user slash angry pizza guy one. Background, I own a decent sized pizza place in a smallish town. It's bordering on city territory in size, but regardless, there's only maybe four other pizza places here. I've owned this store for going on 16 years now and have been delivering for that whole time. We started as a small place with only one driver to now we've expanded our delivery radius as well as moved to a newer and bigger location. Since moving to this new place about seven or eight years ago, I've had to hire more drivers. I get a lot of young kids and people looking to make quick cash as drivers, which doesn't bother me, but it's basically a revolving door for most people as a job, and I understand that. As it sits now, I have seven total drivers for our busy nights, usually Friday and Saturday, unless I have a promo go on for the weekday for some reason. I have four dedicated drivers I've had for years, and five guys and girls that come and go and have been here for a shorter time. As far as pizza places go, we deliver almost anywhere within a 30 minute drive, which I understand is a long drive, but we pay extra to the drivers for a long trip. A lot of these guys can see when we get busy on a Friday and opt to take the trips that suit them best, up to 5 deliveries in one shot sometimes. But this problem lies with almost all the drivers in that they want to take the best trips that give them the most cash, not the optimal trip. For example, if I had a set of deliveries for 1st Street, 2nd Street, and up to 6th Street, which let's say all intersect, an easy delivery, one person will instead take 1st, 3rd, and 5th because it'll get them more money. This annoys me royally, as this makes the 2nd, 4th, and 6th Street pizza late. If we're talking 5 minutes late, then whatever. But when they pull this sometimes, these pizzas get very late almost 20 minutes, and this causes me to get grief from customers about it. I have to give out coupons, three pizzas, three drinks, because they decided to screw my whole order of deliveries up. I told them a hundred times just to do the orders I give you and it'll work out. But they don't listen and the drivers get annoyed and argue with each other. No fist fights, but almost. I told them 10 times, if they pulled this one more time, I'm firing you all. Well, today I made good on that promise and fired all my drivers and closed up for Friday, which is a big day for them for earnings. But I warned them several times to stop doing this and they never listened. There's no shortage of people looking for delivery jobs, so I got all new drivers already, so I'll open up tomorrow no problem. 
Only thing is, I feel bad because some of these guys make enough money to support their kids and lifestyle. And now, I've fricked it all up for them, and there's not too many pizza delivery places around here for them to find another job. Am I the butthole here? I've definitely lost thousands in revenue due to this hit, so I'm super upset. And having had a read through the comments, OP does add a lot of information. He's talked to the drivers countless times, and they've gone behind his back, and clearly disobeyed their boss multiple times, so I'm gonna say not the butthole. You were clear in outlining the responsibilities of the drivers, and they did not adhere to the rules you set as their boss, so not the butthole. But if you want to go have a read and make your own judgement, then feel free to click the link in the description below. I attach all the links to the stories, so you can do that. And here's our next post by user slash sloansbad. My parents died when I, 28 male, was a teenager. They left me quite a sizable inheritance, well into the six figures. Thanks to the wonder that is the stock market, that amount has a figure in the seven figures. Recently, my girlfriend, 26 female, of six years lost her job. She's been trying to get a new job, but she also has some medical issues she has trouble with. About a month ago, her statement for her student loan came. Upon seeing it, she started crying. She told me she was stressed out because of her job and all the bills she'll have to pay. I told her that I would be happy to cover rent for her this month. She wouldn't have to pay it back, it would be a gift. She thanked me, but she told me she couldn't accept the gift. Her reasons were that it would affect her own sense of independence. She didn't elaborate, and I didn't extend our conversation. Since that time, I've tried to cover the full cost of groceries. We split the grocery bill in half. She doesn't let me. She constantly says that she needs to handle her troubles on her own. She says she can't constantly have a saving angel. One time, she directly asked me, what happens tomorrow if you aren't there, when I started insisting I pay? The only thing she allows me to do is buy insulin for her. She's diabetic. Three days ago, the rent was due. She came to me and told me she was $20 short of the rent amount. She asked me for $20. Indeed, her bank account was $20 short of her portion of the rent. So basically, once she paid the rent, her account would be zero until she got her unemployment check. Later on in the night, she seemed really stressed out. Normally, she falls asleep really quickly, and she is a deep sleeper. This night, she kept on tossing and turning. When she finally went to sleep, I got out of bed, made some rough math calculations, considering my income and other balances. I had recently sold some individual stocks right before the crash due to the virus. I wrote a check to her loan service provider. She left her statement on the living room coffee table, so I got the account details from there to put in the memo line. I mailed it on the way to work the next day. The total amount was around $15,000, which is the maximum a person can gift another person without triggering taxes. Now, my girlfriend is mad at me. She thinks that I can magically solve any problems with money. She told me it hurts her self-esteem and makes her feel entitled. I told her that she wasn't entitled. She's been trying hard every day for a job. In fact, she got a job today. Her medical problems aren't her fault. She accused me of buying her affections and treating her like a tramp. Am I the butthole for doing this? I thought I was just helping her. Alright, I may be going against the grain here when I say this, but I believe that there are no buttholes here. OP was doing his best, he was trying to help his long-term girlfriend, a girlfriend of six years. And even though from a legal standpoint they are two separate individuals, as a couple who live together and seem to want to get married in the future, it's important that they act as a team and help each other with their problems. At the same time, I do understand OP's girlfriend. I understand her need to be independent and dealing with her own problems, but at the same time, I believe there is nothing wrong with a little help when you're struggling. Because I believe we all sometimes fall on hard times and there is no reason not to accept OP's generosity. If anything, I think they need to sit down and talk it out properly. OP seems to back out of the conversation every time it comes up. While their girlfriend just seems to be quite aggressive about it in not wanting help, they really need to sit down and just talk through this issue. Alright, and here's our next post by user slash broad draft. I've always gotten called fat and told I was lazy. I have a larger build, I just do. 
I've seen numerous doctors over the years who agree that I'm healthy aside from a hormonal disorder. I'm fairly tall and I've always been under 200 pounds. I do have some anger issues that make me go a little too far sometimes. I'm more than sensitive about this subject, so when I got married to my husband and his bone thin sister started in, it got to me quickly. I quickly grew to hate her. She constantly snips at me and constantly plays little games to bring my self-confidence down. She asked me to be a bridesmaid and purposefully ordered only dresses in size 6 and under. As it turns out, I easily had my four children, and she is infertile. She has had more than one loss. During her latest regular snip, she called me a dairy cow while I was feeding my youngest. I retorted what I thought would be a mild retort that at least I had children to be a dairy cow for. Things went downhill and I basically berated her for her weight and asked her if she ever thought maybe being thin was why she couldn't keep a baby. She ended up sobbing and is currently in the psych ward. I'm wondering if I did go too far. Oh my god, this seemed like a regular Am I the Butthole story until that last little bit. But I don't think I can make a verdict yet. My vote is info. I need to know what caused your sister-in-law to get to the psych ward. If it was your yelling alone that sent her to the psych ward, I'm sorry OP, but you're the butthole. Because that is a bit crazy and a bit over the top. On the other hand, if there were other underlying issues, I'd probably be tossing up between not the butthole and everyone sucks here. And guys, I think that this story is the last one for the day. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel for Reddit videos three times every single week. But with that said, that is it from me. I hope you all enjoyed, and all I want to do is see you all here next time. See you later, guys.